Casey, we just identified the largest property for the fund. How did you find it? Yes, so we do a ton of outbound marketing from direct mail to cold calling to texting. This one we actually did through what's called a voice broadcast uh, marketing channel. So we actually just sent out a bunch of voicemails to people. And one of the people that called back was the owners of this really large multifamily property in Casper. And they obviously thought we were a legit buyer and they called us back and started working through our system. Okay, Casey, Casper is in the center of the state. Is that primarily where you guys are at? Yes, yeah, so we've been marketing across the entire state. Um, as many people know, we started in Laramie, Wyoming, a really strong rental market, but we started to branch out across the state to Cheyenne, to Sheridan, Wyoming, and then also Casper. So as you said, Casper is the dead center of the state, and there's a ton of like service companies that operate out of Casper. I mean, really a lot of the state is serviced in, in many different industries through Casper. You have Casper College there, you have hospitals, um, all, I mean, any big state event, um, if it's not at the state capitol in Cheyenne, it's often at Casper just because it's so centrally located. So a ton of jobs, um, still having a lot of growth. And yeah, we were really excited about Casper. It's a lot more working class, but again, it's got steady, steady, steady jobs and really steady growth. It sounds like Casper is a great market to be in. What jumped out at you specifically for this property? Yes, yeah, so this property in particular was really the size of it. So multifamily properties, um, anybody who is investing in that space knows that these properties are very hard to find. Uh, they're often overpriced when it comes to, so multifamily properties are evaluated based on a cap rate. And they always talk about cap rates of really compressed. And when they compress, that's actually not, um, that's good if you're selling, but if you're buying, that means you're paying a lot more money for these type of properties. So they're really in high demand and they don't pop up every day very often. The other piece is you're able to take down 63 units at once, right? So we've been buying a ton of single family houses. We've done some small multifamily, and even some kind of mid-size, like a 14 unit. But this is a, like, we're literally buying 63 units in one shot. So you start to get all the scalability from like having like a maintenance guy, a full-time maintenance guy on site. Um, you just, the acquisition part of it, like we're able to acquire multiple properties at once. The other thing is renovating. So we're motivating, this particular property has a bunch of actual units that have, they're literally vacant, they haven't been renovated yet. So we're gonna be able to like use um, a ton of efficiencies and scaling with our contractors to where we can go hit multiple units at once. We can actually start to really line them out, get it into a nice schedule and really, and have people doing the same thing over and over and really repeat it and start to refine it. 63 units sounds like a lot to manage. How do you think that you can take this down? Yeah, well, it's really been the team we've been assembling and growing and, and really the foundation of the team we have and their ability to grow. So I guess the easy one to talk about is property management, right? So we have a property management team and they, again, this is actually a virtual team that does a lot of the work and the heavy lifting for us. Um, and they're able to, right now, they're managing over 70 units using this current system. But we've also been like proactively having conversations with this team say, hey, how do we scale this? How can we go hire more people so we can take on more units? So the other thing is the boots on the ground, right? Like if you've ever invested from afar or invest, do real estate investing long distance, you have to have boots on the ground. So we've, we've been assembling teams across Wyoming and getting like trusted contractors, whether they're in-house or the third party. And we've really established those places in places like Sheridan and Laramie. And recently we've been doing that in Casper. So we've done actually, we've done like three flips in the last year in Casper and started to kind of develop those relationships with those contractors. I'm really excited to now, now that we have those boots on the ground and we have multiple units, now we can go out and, and really offer these contractors something to where they're going to want to like prioritize our stuff. And that's ultimately the way you can take down a big deal like this. All right, Casey, 63 units. Is this a skyscraper in the middle of Wyoming? Yeah, in fact, it's one of the mini skyscrapers. If you haven't been to Wyoming, they're all over. <laughs> they're actually, it's kind of funny, the tallest building in Wyoming is actually in Laramie, and it's like a dormitory. I don't know, maybe 11 stories, but it's kind of funny. But you know, definitely not a skyscraper. What The way this property is laid out is it's three different buildings, and they're all spread out. Uh, there's 18 units per building. They're all three-story. Um, it actually sits up, up up on a hill, and it's right in the heart of Casper. That's maybe one of the many exciting parts about this deal, but this particular property is, it's near Casper College, near the hospitals, like right near some of the main streets in Casper. Um, and then, yeah, and it's just, it's kind of spread out. So you got the multiple buildings, there's space. Um, right now it's very pet friendly, and that's actually something we were talking about with the previous owners. They had a lot of success 
um, being pet friendly because not a lot of landlords are and there's still so many people and you guys have probably seen this in Colorado or places like Wyoming everybody wants to have a pet right but there's not always a place to go with a pet um, but with that you got to have somewhere the pets can go out and move around so the reason I bring this up is there's a lot of space there's a dog run but it just it's again, it's very open a um, ton of parking space and just really really sets it up to where I think it makes it a desirable place so 63 units spread out between three buildings over seven acres. How does this compare to the residential properties that you currently have? Yeah, well, first thing is just obviously the size and and the, the logistics and what it takes to take down 63 individual houses. Like those are, well, I'll just like share a story of, and many people can relate to this. Like a lot of people have went and bought a single rental property and they've done what it takes to go and A, find the property, B, finance it, find a bank that will finance it, uh, B, put in property management, um, manage a contractor, do all those things to have one single property. And that's a great way to get started in real estate. And that's what we've done for years, right? But now we get to go do it on 63 units at once. And all those those five different things I told you, we do it all at once and we do them all together. And it just creates a ton of efficiency and it creates a ton of opportunity. All right, Casey, let's dive into the investors of this. So the, if they invest into the fund, they get access to the profit? Yeah, really good question. So the way it works is, yeah, they are going to be an owner in the property, as we mentioned, but they're going to get a portion of the cash flow. Actually, they're going to get the first 6% of the cash flow before so myself i'll be the general partner but because we're buying properties that are already cash flowing we're going to be able to distribute quarterly six percent to the investors we have loans in place we're going to be paying down these loans we're also just going to have normal appreciation to get from properties and then the last thing is what i talked at the beginning but it's called forced appreciation so that is when you go and you actually improve the property and force up the value or the other way you create forced appreciation, especially in multifamily, is by raising the rents. So the way a multifamily property is evaluated versus if you're selling your house um, that you currently own, the way that they do an appraisal, right? And they figure out the value and they, the way they do that is they go look at a bunch of other comparable houses. What did they sell for? Well, in multifamily, the way it's evaluated is how much income is that property actually generating? So if we go in, which is our plan on this deal, is we go in and we raise the rents and we can get expenses down, now it becomes more profitable. And for every, every incremental bit of profit, that increases the value of the property. So again, at the end of four years, which is what we're targeting on this investment, We'll be able to sell the property. We will increase the profits. All right, Casey, let's say someone has capital to deploy. What does the process look like? Yeah, so it's actually a pretty quick process. And my favorite part is step one, and that's actually the discovery call. So we're going to get together. Um, if you're in Houston, let's go grab lunch, or maybe if you're in Wyoming, let's do that. But if not, we'll get on a video call. But this is the reason I like this is we actually get to talk about, hey, like, what are your goals? Is this a good fit for you? I can tell you more about the fund and dive in deeper there, right? So, okay, assuming that we're moving forward from there, that's when I'll be able to share all the documentation that you can review. You can also have time to share it with your attorney to review. But then we're gonna be moving forward. So this deal is actually closing in the next 60 days. So I definitely encourage people to reach out like now. Like, let's get on a call now. Again, that lets you have time to review that documentation because we're gonna be closing this deal in the next 60 days. And not everybody can be a part of this, correct? Yeah, so, well, that's a really good question. So we are we are actually registered through the SEC, so we can take on accredited investors, but also there are some other ways that you could still invest if you're not an accredited investor. Again, we'll kind of go through that on the discovery call, but I encourage anyone to reach out. And hey, and if this deal isn't the right one for you, we're, we're always looking for partners in other smaller deals or many other projects we have going. So I encourage somebody to reach out. Let's do a discovery call either way. And honestly, let's see what the best fit is for them.